Here we are again talking about Anita Sarkeesian. This video was sent to me by this guy. Thanks, by the way, again. It is a little bit dated, but this was made in the height of her scamming career, when she had a good hold on the gaming community. And today she has gone back to irrelevancy that she was when she started out, and now has to make sucker punches and quick jabs at something popular to stay alive. My high school was at the top of a big fuck-off hill, and many of us who didn't live on any of the school's bus lines got to walk down that hill every afternoon to catch the Samtrans. Next to us as we walked, a procession of students who owned cars would form, inching its way downstream to get backed up at the intersection below. One student in the procession stood out to us. We later learned when one of us met him at a party that his name was Jack. Jack was notable for three reasons. First, though he looked just like himself from head on, sitting in profile in his car, he looked exactly like our friend Colin. Second, his car was a blue 1960s Volkswagen Beetle, but with a glass pack installed to amplify the noise from the tailpipe. Bear with this, folks, because this story is being told because he says that anyone that dislikes Anita is like this guy, Jack. So when you turned your head expecting a Hells Angel to come up behind you, it was just Jack in his baby blue love bug. And third, because he glared at us. Jack was the angriest stranger I had ever seen. Once again, out of his car and at a party, he was apparently a pretty nice guy, but at 2.45 in the afternoon, stuck in traffic in what was clearly his mom's old hippie car, he would look out his window and sneer at us, eyebrows knitted and furiously blasting his Bengal tiger of an engine at anyone who made eye contact. He's probably contemplating his life and his life choices and all the bullshit that happened that day, and it's finally boiling in his car. That happens to a lot of people after work or school or anything. And as he pulled ahead, making his way down the hill towards the stoplight, we would call after him. Why are you so angry? Fuck you, that's why! When I spend too much time on the internet and see people, mostly young men, spewing and weirdly directing an incomprehensible anger, I remember Angry Jack. Anita Sarkeesian created the website Feminist Frequency in 2009. It doesn't even seem that long ago. The site was created to host video critiques of popular culture, primarily geek culture, through a feminist lens. And we all know how that fucking works, because she doesn't see the characters on the TV shows nor video games on what they are or what their actions make them, but just down to their skin color and gender. Following in the nerd feminist traditions of Buffy studies and the work of Lindsay Ellis, with early videos being largely critiques of sci-fi fantasy TV shows. Because those shows were highly popular in their day, kind of still are, and it's an easy target for critique and complaining. Then, in 2011, in conjunction with Bitch Media, she produced the series Tropes vs. Women, analyzing six roles commonly played by women in television, movies, and comic books. Hold on to your butts. Though the videos met with some expected resistance. Well, even that's not the understatement of the century. Well, the resistance, as you so put it, was not because a woman was critiquing movies and or comics, it's because she got so much information wrong. In the case of her second video, Women in the Refrigerator. A trope is something that is used constantly, and her videos was mostly biased to begin with. And even today, she still has not changed the formula for her critiquing. They found their audience, and otherwise the internet by and large left her alone. She made several more videos for Feminist Frequency, including a look at the marketing history of Lego. See what she used to do? She did things that were really irrelevant, then she switched to video games. That's where she gained her traction, because video games are more popular than Legos, which Anyone can use, even women. Hell, they even make Legos just for girls. And then, in May of 2012, Sarkeesian ran a modest Kickstarter campaign. And a modest Kickstarter campaign. $6,000 is not modest. That's enough to build a extremely high-powered computer, even some left over for other things. Any Kickstarter that has anything to do with video making for YouTube is not going to be modest. They're usually going to put their goal in the thousands and do not need that much in order to make videos. Sony Video Maker is only like 30, 40 bucks. The one I'm using, you can get a good handy camera for only a few hundred bucks. Basically, all you can really do to get a good grasp about how fucking not modest this is 
Look at any iDubbbz Kickstarter videos dealing with YouTube channels and this video from Sugar Tits. Make sure you agree with me or else and be sure to visit our webpage to donate a fuckload of money, which will help us create something to which Sugar Tits has clearly made within a couple of days, with nothing more than a totally sexy rocking mind and free resources and a $50 subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. See ya! Damn right I made this video in two days. To do another round of Tropes vs. Women, this time focusing on video games. <coughs> I warn you, if this is the first time you've heard of Anita Sarkeesian, it's about to get really ugly. And by necessity, this is only a very abbreviated account, but there's a full bibliography in the notes below the video. He's about to enter the shit tornado to Oz. Yeah, I took a look at your description below, and it's nothing more than links to feminist frequency on how they were harassed. So let's check out biased links to said person in video to their website. The campaign successfully reached its original goal in under 24 hours. By early June, it was 800% funded, had reached all of its stretch goals, and hadn't posted an update since the end of May. I say this because many have argued that what was about to happen was in some way deliberately provoked to create a success. So I'll clarify. Tropes vs. Women in Video Games was already a success. This is where I agree with you, because it had the stamp of feminism in a person who already has a known history of fucking things up and getting facts wrong and cherry-picking things to make her case. This was going to be a perfect storm of a shit -a cane It's gone one step too far. We're in the eye of a shit -a cane here, Did Julian. It had exceeded all expectations and seemed prepared to just wait out the rest of its campaign. What happened next, it's been suggested, began on a sub-forum of the anonymous and largely unmoderated website 4chan. Okay, what is people's deal with 4chan? It's a fucking blog site of people just spewing shit all over the wall with memes and opinions, like most sites. Jesus, anything that has to do with hackers, the media just points their finger straight to 4chan like it's some military operations website. Also, this post is obviously a troll! Though it's hard to find patient zero on this. But somewhere on the internet, a finger was pointed at Anita Sarkeesian. And during her campaign's final weeks, she began receiving thousands of angry tweets and YouTube comments. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Either side is gonna get shit thrown at him for stating their opinion. Just look at Naked Ape. He criticized Bernie Sanders and the Amazing Atheist, and now he's getting shit thrown at him by his own fans. And fuck those people. No one's immune to criticizing. From Anita Sarkeesian to Markiplier. From PewDiePie to Hitler. No one is immune to this, and you're gonna get shit thrown at you from both sides. She had her site DDoS'd, had her Wikipedia page vandalized with porn and racial slurs, and saw multiple attempts to have her campaign defunded and removed from Kickstarter. Don't get me wrong, this is quite horrendous, but however, this is trolling, this is going to happen. However, I do not condone nor agree with this. I'm going to make something clear. I'm willing to have a discussion. We need discussion to get to a conclusion. Without it, we are not just going to get anywhere. Anyone on one side or the other who is not willing to hear another opinion and not want to discuss is not going to be able to truly understand anything. Censoring of any kind, whether it be on my side, there is no excuse for it. And free speech, whether it be out of spite and anger or understandment and reason, needs to be heard. Fuck you. Many of these things were done by coordinated groups of people working together. This was unexpected. Really? After a few days of this, Sarkeesian chose to document the harassment and post about it on her site and on her Kickstarter. Which was used as fuel for her Kickstarter. That's what really funded her Kickstarter. The harassment. Starting around June 10th, several news sites began writing articles about Sarkeesian's experience, using her posts as a primary source. This led to a huge uptick in exposure, and, by extension, backers, and the campaign tripled its money before closing on June 16th. The combination of a large-scale attempt to silence Sarkeesian and her decision not to be silent about it made her a minor feminist celebrity, and she closed a $6,000 campaign with just shy of 160 grand. And a lot of people still ask, where did all that money go to? Because her quality of production did not go up any at all. 
So everyone is wondering where it all went. In the three years since, this cycle has repeated and amplified dozens of times. An attempt to silence, followed by exposure of the attempt, followed by news articles and increased attention. Here's the point of the video where he goes all conspiracy nut job. And every time, her detractors go off and plan more elaborate efforts to make Sarkeesian disappear, essentially creating next week's Sarkeesian talking points. They've repeatedly tried to hack her personal information. They've sent her hundreds of highly specific death threats, some including the home addresses of her and her family, which she now dutifully screenshots and forwards to the FBI. Again, all bad. However, in this case, with the FBI, they found most of the tweets were written possibly by the same person. In the reactionary web's tendency to assume that anyone you hate must be a minority of some kind. Are you high or just incredibly stupid? So, since we hate Sarkeesian, it means we hate minorities as well. That doesn't make any sense. Many let loose with a torrent of anti-Semitism, dubbing her jew -Kesian. It's making fun of her gigantic nose, you fuck. That and being a money-grubbing Jew. Which, when her true heritage was determined, flipped to anti-Armenian commentary without skipping a beat. One created a video game about assaulting her. Yeah, that's gonna happen, and there's a lot more. It's actually quite common. There's some with Obama, Trump, other celebrities. It's not really that uncommon. One threatened to blow up the game developers conference if they gave her an award. One threatened to shoot up a school if she was allowed to speak. And nothing happened. However, the case in Utah, it was a to the public speech. And she closed it down because of the security wouldn't heighten because of this legitimate threat. Even though the police said there is no legitimacy of this threat and there's no need to worry. They abuse YouTube's flagging systems every time she posts a video and send her over 100 abusive tweets every week. You're acting like this never happens to anyone else. Again, it's quite common. When someone doesn't like someone, they're probably trying to shut them down. However, I'm not trying to shut her down. I'm just trying to say, you don't really know what she's talking about. I could go on. I can't speak to the human cost this has had on Sarkeesian personally, so I'll just let her speak for herself. I don't get to publicly express sadness or rage or exhaustion or anxiety or depression. I can't say that sometimes the harassment really gets to me, or conversely, that the harassment has become so normal that sometimes I don't feel anything at all. I don't get to express feelings of fear or how tiring it is to be constantly vigilant of my physical and digital surroundings. How I don't go to certain events because I don't feel safe. Or how I sit in the more secluded areas of coffee shops and restaurants so the least amount of people can recognize me. And of course, we all know if you tweet constantly how much you hate video games and the people who make them, as well as make shit YouTube videos on the matter with shit data, it means you can't express yourself. Anita just lied to that entire audience. She thrives on that harassment. She's been on the news. She's even been on the Colbert Report speaking out against video games and her horrible mistreatment, as well as that article on how tweets drove her out of her home. And as you stated in this video, sent reports to the FBI, in which case they were all closed because they turned out just to be shit posters. There is nothing barring her to state her opinion or her harassment. She's making that up to make her look like a victim. She thrives on victimhood. Women like her and people like her thrive on victimhood. How do you think she was able to get half a million dollars and 230,000 more for a Kickstarter she had already completed without completing the first one? Outside of these haters, the videos have been well received and seen by a whole lot more people than had she simply gotten to wrap her campaign and make her videos in peace. Yeah, let me just do a quick search on one of her videos. Oh. 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 See, you could say something's highly rated when you disable the comments and disable the like and dislike button. That's like a restaurant calling itself five stars, but it's the worst restaurant around town. Their primary function is to critique a medium that hasn't seen as much feminist analysis as the rest of pop culture. Because that's what we really need, more cancerous feminist shit in more of our stuff. 
It is, in a roundabout way, a sign of gaming's growing cultural legitimacy. It had legitimacy before Sarkeesian put a big fat fucking nose into it. Sarkeesian coins new phrases and puts forth new ideas, but the bulk of her work is compiling. What new ideas? Her videos and articles are mostly the same thing, just bitching and complaining about women in video games. It's nothing different. Her videos are like Call of Duty. It's always the same and nothing changes. Maybe a new mechanic, but it's probably stolen from something else. Most of her views are shared by contemporary feminists, whom she quotes in her videos. Yeah, of course she's gonna put their quotes in her videos. Who else is she gonna get quotes from? People of the opposite side? People who don't agree with her? Hell no! Her videos won't work then, they'll just fall apart! And the interest in how women are portrayed in popular media goes back to the 60s or earlier. Yeah, because that's the only way they can make their points. Unless they try to tackle third world countries like, I don't know, maybe any country that has Islam in it. Today, much of this is taught in freshman level women's studies and media literacy courses. This rhetoric is not new, and by most definitions of radical, it is not radical. And Sarkeesian is hardly the first person to apply it to games. There are equivalent matches Christians stating that video games are causing violence in children, which studies have shown as fact it's caused less violence. In actuality, video games have caused a decline in violence. All prompting the question of why? Why her and why now? Because she kicked a hornet's nest. Sarkeesian herself has described it as being cast as the supervillain in a war against what she represents. Really? The people who hate Anita Sarkeesian think she's wrong. Think? On occasion, yes, she is wrong. Most of her opinions and critiques are wrong. If she didn't disable the dislike button, maybe it will be just as bad as the new Ghostbuster trailer. They think she's lying. They think she hates men. They think she hates games. They think she cherry-picks information to skew opinions. They think she cheated people out of their money. They think she wants every game to be a walking simulator about lesbians and feelings. They think she wants to ruin games. And you can, if you squint and tilt your head, see how a person might possibly believe these things. I'm going to show you a remix that I just finished this weekend and no one else has seen. <laughs> one person has seen it. It's a soundtrack of one song, except I'm doing video games. So it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. I don't want to go around shooting people and ripping off their heads, and it's just gross. Most of those statements are true. Man-hating or the lesbian thing, I'm not so sure. But yes, she in the past has cherry-picked, manipulated, and lied about video games. She's even stolen Let's Play footage in the past. Her criticism of Hitman is most prominent when she manipulated and lied about the game mechanics of the game prompting you to assault women and sh the strippers which in case it's actually the reverse and anyone besides your target is a negative to your points. So yes, she has lied, she has manipulated, she has cherry picked information and yes, even stolen money. She started her Kickstarter campaign in 2012 and it was supposed to end in August of 2012. It has been Five years, and she's nowhere near completion. And on top of that, she started yet another Kickstarter campaign for a video series that was already fully funded and got 230000 more dollars. You tell me that's not conning someone out of their money. But this can only explain that they are angry, not why. Well, sir, if you actually went to articles and videos on why people don't like her, videos that are not someone raging against her, someone who is in-depth analysis like Sargon, or even someone like Naked Ape, they'll tell you why they don't like Anita Sarkeesian and why she's not a good representation for female gamers. Hell, female gamers hate her the most. 
What is the nightmare scenario we're supposed to live in if Sarkeesian simply makes her videos? So what if she did want to ruin games? So what if I wanted to ruin games? That doesn't mean I'm capable of it. No, that just means you're biased to the medium at hand, and someone that's biased is not going to give a good opinion about it. It means to destroy it or change it, which Anita is trying to do. Something that's already good doesn't need to be changed. If a food critic is biased against Gordon Ramsay, then they're going to get a biased opinion about it. Can all this be explained as wanting to stop a heretofore largely unknown woman on the internet from being wrong about something? Why are they so angry? I just told you why. She's completely biased to the medium and she lies, manipulates, cheats and cherry picks information and gets so much information wrong about it and she's still being held to a standard that she knows what she's doing even though it's clearly seen that she does not know what she's talking about. For ease of conversation, I'm going to call this inexplicably furious person Angry Jack. And there is no single answer to this question. Uh, I just told you why. Jay Allen has described it as the spilling out of Chan culture into the rest of the internet, and those thoughts have been expanded on by Lana Polanski. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? What the hell does this have to do with anything? Tell me what's happening! Catherine Cross has written about the gamer's fear that some authority figure is going to take the games away, stemming from childhoods where games were controlled by parents and censored by politicians. Remember when Target and Kmart took away GTA 5 because feminists stated that there's violence against women? Remember when Tracer got censored and had her pose changed become some soccer mom got all triggered by it? Remember when feminists complained about Dead or Alive Extreme 3 and they took away the American version for it? Remember when they censored Street Fighter V with Mika and Kami? Kam Kanyosing and Carter Souls have written about the appropriation of minority politics and terminology to describe geekdom as a sort of simulated oppressed ethnicity. Are you high or just incredibly stupid? Don't read anything I'm going to say as debunking or overriding these arguments. I agree with all of them. This is just one more log on the fire. Of course you do. Why else would you cover it? The internet is full of angry jacks. Really? And Jack is not exclusively, but is typically male. Mr. Strummer! He's also commonly white and or straight and or cis and or raised middle class. Oh, good for you! And here we go with showing you true colors. And here I thought it was going to be someone who is not a social justice warrior. Which is to say, he usually looks like me. And it is largely people who look like me in at least one of these ways that I want to speak to right now. No, you don't want to speak to. You want to talk down to. There's a difference. To people who look like me, Jack is often a nuisance. Yes, because all we know is white men are a nuisance. What's next? Black men are dangerous? To people who don't look like me, Jack is frequently dangerous. Not to self. Don't say stupid things are going to happen, then stupid things are going to happen. Note that anyone that's angry can be annoying and or dangerous. And I don't feel it's my place to tell people for whom Jack is a danger how they should think or feel about him. To people who look like me, Jack is often a nuisance. To people who don't look like me, Jack is frequently dangerous. Though minoritized people are absolutely welcome to view this or any of my other videos and to hold me accountable to anything I fuck up. Cause as we know, there are no minority video gamers, male or female. For God's sakes, you're fucking stupid. Also, Jack, if you're watching, I'm afraid I'm not here to talk to you either. I'm here to talk about you. So he's basically just wants to talk down to white men since he wants the white knight for Anita Sarkeesian here. Though, if you've made it this far, do please stick around. Because our question, why are you so angry, is probably something worth asking yourself. Maybe instead of asking that, maybe you should dig a little further on why people are so angry. And you'll probably come up with the information and the evidence why we are so angry at her. And you'll probably start to agree with us. To answer that question, I'm going to have to talk about a whole lot of other shit, but bear with me. 
I am going somewhere with this. And no, you're not. You're basically a generic white knight who does not even dig into why people are angry. You just defend the woman because she's a woman and she needs defending. I'd like to thank this guy again for sending me the link to this video and the video in question will be in the link in the description below. If you want to further support me, go ahead and click in the description below for the Patreon link. And I will see you meatbags in the next video. Oh, I'm